Well, that that is a, an incredibly potent insight that when you recognize that space in which there is the absence of a, quote, me. And this is, in the beginning, a cr somewhat crude uh, sense. By crude, I, I just mean it, 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 it lacks refinement of what it is. You, there is a space that, that is glimpsed. There's a sense, a recognition that I am absent in some sense, that there is something absent. And then this process that uh, I talk about, what I call the living teaching, is very much concerned with refining what that is, to, to see if we can isolate and recognize more precisely what it is that is present and what it is that is absent. Because in the beginning, we tend to, to kind of throw the whole me notion out. Say, when I'm not there, then there is the flow. Then there is the openness, the spaciousness, the peace, the understanding, the, that good feeling, that good sense, that sense of connectedness and presence. And so in that seeing there's there's often a, a real kind of exuberance uh, and the whole notion of the me gets tossed out as this we look into it more deeply as we start to really take a couple of deep breaths and, and examine this thing. Uh, deeper and much more profound insights can come about what it is that is present, what it is that is absent in those moments of peace and space, and how that presence and absence relates. These are these are really the question, the, the the basic kinds of questions that we address here in this living teaching. Trying to get to wrap my head around the the analogy that you had of the ocean and the waves. Mm. Um, in the way that you said it, I, I was having a bit of a tough time. Okay. Well, let's try it again. Mm. Because it's really, to me, the, the best metaphor that I have encountered to give a framework for talking about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The <clears throat> ocean represents this essence this quality of presence, of totality that is there and often glimpsed in the, that moment where there is a sense of the absence of a separate me. Now, this particular metaphor of the ocean and the wave, this me, is represented by the wave. So we, all the objects in the, in the universe, are spoken of as waves. Movements of this ocean, simply movement, having no independent existence. That's the essential beauty of the metaphor, that within this model of the ocean and the wave, you can have billions of waves, 
each one unique, each one with a different quality and characteristic. You can name them. You can compare them. You can have a whole uh, play with them because they're different characters. They're different personalities, each of these ways. And so the drama of life can play out through these different ways. The essential understanding here is that though there are billions of ways, all that any of these waves are is oceans. They have never been anything other than ocean, even though the quality that human beings have is that at around the age of two years old, the human being feels, the human wave feels, I'm not a wave. I'm a droplet. I am separate and independent. And all of these other things aren't waves either. They're droplets as well. So the model that, as human beings, that we begin to develop and live with is one of all of these separate independent things of which I am one. And that's how most people live and how most people perceive the world. And it is the general, it is the prevailing attitude of life that we are each independent, powerful entities. We have the power to choose. We have the power to act. We have the power to decide. And that power is ours because we are separate and we are independent. Now, when we begin to see through this falsity, and there is a glimpse of the unity of things, that is what I was referring to earlier as this point in which this openness comes. And there's no returning. Once you, <laughs> once you get a get a glimpse of it. You can't ever go back to it never having had a glimpse. And that's a dramatic and powerful shift in the consciousness of that particular wave. And it is the point at which the wave begins to realize itself as the wave rather than the droplet, and implicit in this recognition of oneself as the way is the recognition of oneself as the ocean, because they are not separate. They never have been. And even with the false sense of being separate, there wasn't separation. It was still the wave feeling itself falsely to be a droplet. But the belief in something, even if it's shared by billions of other waves, doesn't make it so. And so here we're talking about this. We're really looking at it, saying, okay, you're probably here because you've had the glimpse. You're probably here because that opening has occurred and that opportunity is there. Now, in this living teaching, in this space, there is a support for the continued investigation, your own investigation, 
of the truth. See if you can find the truth of this for yourself. And this living teaching is not about replacing one set of concepts with another one, but rather simply to facilitate your own direct seeing of what is true.